I call on Deputy Michal Martin, please. Um, thank you, uh, Kian Corlip. Taoiseach, uh, thousands of patients uh, are being impacted as we speak uh, because of the nurses' strike. Uh, in passing, I want to welcome the uh, care that is continuing to be given to cancer patients and to patients on dialysis, and that agreement was reached with the nursing organisation. Up to 25,000 appointments have been cancelled. There's a lot of anxiety out there amongst patients and people with chronic illness and so on, and people are waiting elective surgery in the coming weeks in terms of what will happen. Uh, and as you know, uh, the strike, this strike will be followed by more intensive action with consecutive days uh, of strike action um, in a number of weeks in, in, in February, throughout February. It is my view that there's been no proactive engagement from government in relation to this dispute with the nursing representatives. Uh, the belated 11th hour activity that we witnessed over the last number of days was far too little and far too late. And the sense was from officialdom was that we're going to let this strike happen today uh, and then see uh, what happens um, after that. And I don't think there was any genuine attempt made uh, to engage with a view to preventing today's strike. And I think the government is also, in my view, in denial uh, about the recruitment and the retention issues um, within the health service and particularly specifically um, to nursing. Uh, the agency nursing is costing 1.4 million a week. Uh, we are hemorrhaging nurses from our colleges uh, to the United Kingdom and to further a field. There was a young student on uh, Sean O'Rourke this morning talking about how he will be offered six months accommodation in London. He has three job offers. That's fairly typical. Uh, the UK hospitals are over on all our college campuses um, on a regular basis. And there will always be to and fro I get that. And people, but the, the imbalance today is extraordinary. We're talking about 80 to 90 per cent of graduates or, or final year students not staying in the Irish system uh, and, and going overseas. Uh, and um, that's the estimates that are being made. And I, you know, and I think it, that, that is a serious issue. And meanwhile, then, we're spending hundreds of thousands on trying to recruit. Uh, from non-EU countries to uh, fill the gaps and so on in our service. Now, there is an imbalance there that reveals something that is unattractive uh, to those who are qualifying as nurses to stay in Ireland. Uh, I have no doubt about that. Morale is low. Uh, we're, the nurses are working in a very high pressurised environment um, uh, and are very worried about the quality of the care that they are given because of that. Shortages of staff, high acuity levels and all of that. Now, yesterday, Tishuk, you said um, that you want to resolve this, that these disputes do ultimately get resolved, and that government uh, is part of the, uh, the industrial relations uh, machinery. Uh, can you indicate to me what initiative you now plan to take uh, to uh, get this issue resolved and to prevent the anxiety that many patients undoubtedly feel? Thanks and secondly, do you accept uh, that there's an unacceptable and excessive level of hemorrhaging of nurses from our colleges uh, to overseas locations. Uh, and what does the government intend to do about that? Thanks. Um, thanks very much, uh, Deputy, for raising this important matter. And I am, of course, as is government, very aware uh, that a strike by nurses and midwives uh, belonging to the INMO uh, is taking place today across the country. Uh, and I profoundly regret uh, and I'm sorry for the disruption and inconvenience that's been caused to patients. Um, appointments and operations are often cancelled for one reason or another, uh, but for 2,000 operations and 12,000 appointments to be cancelled uh, on one day uh, is without precedent. But we will do all that we can in the weeks ahead to catch up on the lost work, uh, just as we did uh, when days of work were lost last year uh, on account of the storms and the bad weather. And I'm confident that we can do that uh, and catch up on those lost appointments uh, and lost operations um, over the uh, spring period. And I do want to recognise the fact that uh, nurses are providing cover in emergency departments, uh, cancer care, um, maternity units uh, and some other essential areas as well. And I've no doubt, nor does anyone in government have any doubt about the strength of feeling on the part of nurses and midwives about their pay and conditions. And we've no doubt about their resolve and their willingness to strike again. And I've no doubt that the public is strongly behind them. So we do want to resolve this dispute, but I believe it can only be resolved within, per within particular parameters, uh, which I outlined yesterday. Any solution has to be affordable to the taxpayer, has to be fair to other public servants, 
and has to be fair and beneficial to patients as well. And we are available to engage, uh, as is the normal process, uh, under the auspices uh, of the Workplace Relations Commission uh, or the Labour Court to resolve it. Uh, what do I mean by being affordable to the taxpayer? Uh, as you know, we uh, ran a small budget surplus last year, hope to run uh, a small budget surplus this year, but that is far from guaranteed given the uh, uncertainty uh, around Brexit. Um, we're not in a position to borrow hundreds of millions of euros uh, to fund pay increases. Uh, I can justify uh, borrowing hundreds of millions of euros uh, for emergency measures uh, to save jobs, uh, if, we, if it comes to that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I can justify borrowing that money for one-off capital projects that will be with us for 40 or 50 years. But I think borrowing money and funding pay increases with borrowed money is bad policy. That's the kind of thing that leads to pay cuts in a few years' time. And I never want us to get back into that position again. When I say fair to all public servants, we need to bear in mind that we have a pay deal uh, with all public servants. Uh, and there are other claims that are being made as well uh, that have to be examined. Uh, and if we do a special deal with one group, it will not be possible to do a special deal with all groups. So any solution has to be done uh, under the umbrella of the agreement uh, and uh, with the involvement of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions. And we also need to be fair to patients, even in one of the richest countries of the world. And we are one of the richest countries in the world. Health budgets are limited. Uh, and I don't want to be put in a position where we have to divert money uh, that's earmarked for new medicines or new technologies or new treatments uh, to pay increases. I don't think that would be right. Uh, we also need the cooperation uh, of unions in making the kind of reforms to the health service that we want to make. Thank you, Taoiseach. Taoiseach, uh, there was no limit to the budget for the Children's Hospital. Uh, and I think it's wrong to try and pit nurses against the idea that if we uh, do a deal with nursing or if this issue gets resolved, somehow it will be at the expense of... Uh, medicines for patients and so on like that. Now, you gave a very impressive detached commentary and a series of observations at the beginning of your response, Taoiseach, full of empathy, understanding the, uh, how, how um, committed the nurses are to getting this issue resolved. But then you went on in the latter part to give every single reason as to why you don't think this can be resolved or you're in a position to resolve it. I got no sense of any initiative that you're about to take. And we're not asking you to borrow money. Nobody's asking you to borrow money. Uh, no one is asking you. I mean, you're the person who, without any provocation, said you had three billion over the next three four, to four years on tax uh, in, in income cuts. Just out of the blue, you said you can produce three, three billion like that. You can promise what you like to those that you deem to be in your interests. But everybody else, if it comes to climate change, if it comes to uh, the health service, different rules apply. Thank you, uh, and Brexit was never invoked at your Ardesh last autumn. My point being, Taoiseach, you said yesterday that this will be resolved. All disputes end up being resolved. Um, and the, there, are, there are mechanisms there. You know, we did have a nursing commission in the past which dramatically transformed nursing relative to the position it had prior to that. Yes, time is up now, uh, David, there are please. proposals uh, around uh, various um, pay mechanisms or incrementals and so on that could be deployed. Uh, to help bring this to a resolution. But I get no sense that there's any proactivity in that regard, uh, because you said yesterday that you, were, that you were a party to the industrial bodies the government was, Everybody, please, uh, the time and that this up. would be resolved. But I get no sense of how you intend to set in motion the resolution process of the dispute. Please, sure. I'm afraid, Deputy, I, can, I can't help you with your, with your senses. I've outlined in my previous answer um, where I believe uh, the parameters are for a solution to this, and I think I explained that uh, very clearly. In relation to tax, I've always said that any tax cuts have to be affordable. Um, I certainly wouldn't borrow money to fund tax cuts and, uh, and haven't, done, haven't done so uh, in the past two years. Um, and what we propose, and what we propose uh, is that uh, if the economy continues to grow, what, what I propose if the economy continues to grow uh, the way it has been growing for the last couple of years, because there are more people working, uh, because people are earning more, the amount of income tax we take in goes up by about 1.2 billion a year. And I propose, if we can afford it, to give about half of that back to 900,000 taxpayers. And actually, the vast majority of nurses and midwives uh, would benefit from that as well. But it wouldn't just be one group. It would benefit uh, nearly 900,000 taxpayers.